okay so let's start with the problem uh, find the inverse laplace transform of x of s so this is equal to uh, let's say 4 by s square plus 2 s plus 4 okay so this is uh, the laplace transform x of s it is given to us the question is um, find the inverse laplace transform of uh, this particular um, expression uh, assuming assuming uh, uh, it assuming the signal signal as causal okay so i have already told you what is causal signal so it will be right handed causal means right handed So what is the procedure? The procedure is to uh, first uh, find out the roots in the denominator and see uh, whether you can express it in standard form. So now if you look at the roots uh, of the denominator, so that is x square plus 2s plus 4 equal to 0. So if you find the root, so that is there will be two roots, 1 and 2 and that will be minus 2 plus or minus square root of 4 minus that is b square minus 4 ac so 4 ac is basically 16 uh, by 2 so that is equal to um, minus 2 plus or minus so this is square root of 12 by 2 oh, sorry minus 12 so you can put a j here uh, if you simplify it further maybe you can write it as minus 1 plus or minus j uh, root 3 so that is that, that is the expression so th these are the roots now um, how we can write it in standard form uh, so we can um, continue to use the methods that I explained in the last problem where um, you take the first root uh, so that means the given expression x of s uh, I, x of s I can write it as 4 by s minus the first root so first root may be minus 1 plus j square root of 3 and then into uh, s minus uh, minus 1 minus j square root of 3 I could write like this and then uh, I expand it as partial fraction that is possible so let us say a by uh, s so if I write this as s plus 1 um, minus j root 3 then plus b by uh, s plus 1 uh, plus j root so i could write like this and then uh, find out the coefficient and then uh, proceed this way so this is one way but uh, for this problem i am not going to do this this method rather i would like to bring it into a form where uh, uh, it will uh, be it, it could be compared with um, the Laplace transform of sine omega 0 t and cos omega 0 t so if you remember we had uh, evaluated uh, the Laplace transform of cos omega 0 t u of t if you remember uh, this was basically um, uh, s by uh, s square plus omega 0 squared so that was one and then similarly Laplace transform of sine omega 0 t you have to uh, 
by heart these formulas then only we can find out inverse okay easily so this will be uh, sorry uh, this will be omega 0 divided by a square plus omega 0 square so these things we have seen in the earlier class now another uh, thing is that as an extension of these so if you multiply with um, e raised to minus a t uh, cos omega 0 t u of t if you do this then what is going to happen is wherever s is there it will be replaced with a s plus a so you can write it as s plus a divided by s plus a whole square plus omega 0 square and similarly uh, e raised to minus a t sine sine omega 0 t u of t you could write it as omega 0 here also i replace s with s plus a there is no s term in the numerator so i will have omega 0 by this so this uh, if you can prepare it in this form then also you can find out uh, the uh, inverse very easily using the comparison with the standard term so rather than um, proceeding with um, of the partial fraction expansion as I have shown above that means um, uh, instead of doing this way we will prefer to do uh, in a slightly different manner where we will have second order terms in the denominator so that is uh, x of s is equal to so what I would do is I would write it as um, x plus 1 uh, x plus 1 square uh, okay so look at this uh, denominator <coughs> so let me rewrite this first of all so if i rewrite it it is s plus 1 minus j root 3 into s plus 1 plus j root 3. okay now instead of expanding it as partial fractions like this what I would do is I will just simply multiply the denominator terms and write like s plus 1 the whole square uh, plus uh, 3. So 3 is basically root 3 square. So it is a plus uh, uh, a minus say jb into a plus jb that will be <coughs> a square plus uh, b square. So that is what I have used. So you could write like this or you could write like this uh, okay so this is a, a very standard form to which uh, now i can compare uh, one of the above formulas okay so you see there is a constant here four and uh, so it is better to compare with uh, mm, say the second one where is sine omega 0 t u of t multiplying with e raised to minus a t. Now by comparison you can find out uh, what should be the a, uh, what should be the omega 0. Okay, So by comparison, so this will be much more faster. If you have followed the earlier method, uh, yeah, when you have complex roots it will take a long time. Okay, So here, sorry. here a by comparison is uh, say 1 then what about omega 0 omega 0 is basically root 3 uh, what else oh, yeah that's all these are the only two things so now i will bring root 3 there so in order to bring root 3 what we have to do is multiply and divide with root 3 okay so this will be s plus 1 the whole square plus root 3 the whole square so there was a 4 here and that will be divided by root 3 okay so now i can go ahead and evaluate the inverse laplace transform so laplace transform inverse of x of s is equal to 4 by uh, uh, 4 by root 3 4 by root 3 uh, into laplace transform inverse of root 3 divided by s plus 1 the whole square plus root 3 the whole square okay so this uh, is 4 by root 3 into 
so what is uh, this uh, this is a standard term so the inverse is basically e raised to minus a t sin omega 0 t into u of t so that is the answer ok e raised to minus a t sin omega 0 t u of t ok so this way you can uh, uh, find out the inverse Laplace transform if you know a very few number of uh, standard Laplace transform table uh, okay if you if you by heart those uh, uh, standard expressions then uh, by comparison with those standard expressions you can immediately evaluate um, this now if you had proceeded with um, the earlier method okay so that is like uh, write them as first order terms then also you will finally ultimately get back uh, this form but it will require a lot of algebra which is uh, really unnecessary to go through so mm, you can try this yourself as a homework uh, okay so i will give this part as a homework uh, but you should be able to show uh, that this is uh, if you proceed in this manner uh, then also you should get uh, uh, what we have got below okay so continue to evaluate by taking the inverse of uh, this fi first find out a and b and uh, once you find out a and b then uh, you compare it with uh, the standard first order uh, uh, terms okay in the table laplace transform table and then evaluate and then you have to do some algebra okay now when you find a and b you will see that uh, b will be the conjugate of a so whenever you have complex conjugate roots uh, the residues will be also uh, appear in us uh, appear as conjugates so i am not going into it but i am giving that as a homework so you should be able to show that that ultimately if you simplify using some algebra uh, so like euler's theorem or uh, euler's formula you have to use where sin omega 0 t is basically raised to j omega 0 t uh, then uh, minus raised to minus j omega 0 t uh, that that formula you have to use so here a is given as 1 omega 0 is root 3 so if you want you can substitute it okay so let me just substitute it uh, sorry. so this uh, i can substitute so it will be a is 1 so e raised to minus t and uh, omega 0 is root 3 t okay, so this will be the answer now uh, let me take uh, one more problem of inverse okay um, that is uh, again a standard problem so again uh, find laplace transform inverse of uh, say s plus 1 divided by s into s square plus 2s plus 4 so the roots uh, are same because uh, i have used the same um, uh, polynomial in the denominator s square plus 2s plus 4 but i have added a few more things okay in the numerator is not uh, uh, constant it is s plus 1 and denominator has an, an additional less okay so how to do this again the idea is the same uh, so x of s is equal to s plus 1 divided by s square plus 2s plus 4 so what we do <coughs> so what we do here is that we know uh, the roots of s square plus 2s plus 4 we have already found it out from uh, so uh, the roots are basically uh, s 1 2 is equal to um, uh, um, minus 1 then uh, plus or minus j root 3 so these were the roots so that we already know uh, so how to proceed from here so you, you see that there is a first order uh, term s and then there is a second order term which has complex conjugate roots. so complex conjugate roots whenever we have we will write it uh, as uh, uh, standard form which is uh, comparable with the sine and cos uh, laplace transform <coughs> okay and uh, if you have uh, an additional term that we will write like a by s uh, plus uh, b s plus c divided by square 
plus uh, 2s plus 4. So this is uh, step number 1. So I have separated it into, um, I mean, I have used the partial fraction expansion method, but uh, I have kept uh, the second term uh, as such. So now I need to find out what is a, b and c these constants. Okay, so now I will do further, uh, I will write this as a by s uh, plus then uh, I will write it as bs plus c divided by s plus 1 whole square plus uh, uh, root 3 square. So that is basically another way of writing s plus s square plus 2s plus 4 I could write like this also. If you expand it you will see that uh, I will get back this. <coughs> so this is essentially the modif I mean uh, uh, a standard form because I know the inverse of s by s plus 1 square plus uh, root 3 whole square and also a constant by uh, the same denominator. So I can compare with the sine and cos. Okay, so, um, so first uh, uh, aim is to find out basically what is a b c. Okay, so as I told you <coughs> to find out these uh, coefficients a b c you can either uh, substitute values of s uh, so you one, one thing you can do is uh, s plus 1 you can write it as a into s square plus 2s plus 4 plus b s plus c into s so immediately uh, i would feel like putting s is equal to 0 so that will cancel of the second term i will get uh, everything in um, just uh, in terms of a so put s is equal to 0 so that is very convenient left hand side is 1 right hand side this com second term completely goes away and uh, this is 4a and I get a is equal to 1 by 4. So I got uh, a <coughs> now um, I, I need to find out um, other uh, coefficients that is b and c. So for that um, again you can put um, some values for s but the thing is that in this case uh, putting some values of s unless and otherwise you put a complex conjugate values uh, you will not have uh, the uh, the term the first term going to zero so therefore it is better to equate uh, the coefficients of s uh, in the lhs and rhs okay so uh, let's take um, uh, s raised to one term okay so s raised to one term on the lhs it is 1 and in the rhs uh, it is basically 2a from the first term so there is an s term here and here you have a plus b okay i am equating the coefficient of s okay coefficient of s raised to one term coefficient of s raised to one term so here i see the coefficient of s is basically 1 and uh, in this first term on the right hand side the coefficient of s is 2a and here it is b so that is equal to 1 so and i can substitute uh, so a is basically so that is 1 is equal to 2 by 4 plus b so 2 by 4 is half i take uh, that half to the other side so i will get b is equal to uh, b is equal to half so i got b also so this is a uh, uh, way we can find out uh, these constants. So again, uh, if I now equate uh, the, uh, I think I made a mistake. Um, the coefficient of s is not uh, b; it is basically c. Okay, so I made a mistake. So let me correct it. So this is basically c. Isn't it? This is C. So C is what I got as uh, half. So you need to be careful with the algebra. Okay. So here the uh, B is basically coefficient of S square. Okay. There is a multiplication with S. So it is S square. And the C is having coefficient. Uh, C is the coefficient of S. So I substitute and then I, I get um, basically 1 minus half which is half. Now coefficient of um, s square coefficient of a square term if i take then 
there is no a square term on the lhs and in the rhs i have a and then uh, i have also b so it is basically a plus b which means that uh, b is equal to uh, minus 1 by half 1 by 4 okay so i got all the coefficients so therefore um, i could now rewrite my x of s so therefore x of s is equal to a a is what 1 by 4 divided by s plus <coughs> b is what minus 1 by 4 s plus <coughs> c is half divided by s plus 1 the whole square okay so now we are almost um, arrived in a standard form mm, but not really exactly um, uh, <coughs> uh, in a comparable manner but uh, let's let's uh, do little more algebra so that i can write this as like uh, 1 by 1 by 4 1 by s plus now you see that i have a minus 1 by 4 into s but i need s plus 1 here so what i can do is um, i will rearrange this term So there is 1 by 4 s but what I want is s plus 1 ok. So what I have to do is basically um, I can add and subtract s. <coughs> so, so minus 1 by 4 so what I will do s plus 1 and then minus 1. So I do not change anything here I just added and subtract 1 inside s and then again half uh, divided by s plus 1 the whole square. So this is my approach to bring it into the standard form where the new deno one of the numerator term should be s plus 1. So, if I do that then I need uh, so again 1 by 4 1 by s plus uh, so, so the first term I will take it out so that is 1 by 4 and then I will write it as s plus 1 divided by s plus 1 the whole square square root of 3 the whole square so that will give you the first term and then uh, the other term is basically i have a half here then um, th that is this half and then i have minus 1 by 4 into minus 1 which is plus 1 by 4 so that is like plus 1 by 4 okay so that will combine and uh, form the next term so that is s plus 1 the whole square plus root 3 the whole square so half plus 1 by 4 is 3 by 4 so i will write it as a coefficient here so 3 by 4 and then i need uh, root 3 here so i have to put this as also root 3 so now it is uh, in standard form so now i can immediately take out uh, the inverse of x of s so therefore uh, inverse laplace transform inverse of x of s is equal to 1 by 4 okay again i am assuming right handed signal okay uh, so <coughs> so that is uh, the most practical case if it is not mentioned uh, you really need that to be mentioned in the question if it is not mentioned um, uh, you uh, specify that assuming it has right handed signal you are doing it okay so this is u of t u of t inverse laplace transform is 1 by s so therefore inverse transform of 1 by s is u of t so then minus 1 by 4 and what is this term this term is basically um, e raised to uh, e raised to minus t then cos cos uh, omega 0 is root 3 t into u of t so that is this and then you have uh, root 3 by 4 uh, the last term is basically e raised to minus t sin root 3 uh, t uh, u of t so u of t is uh, common everywhere you can take it out so you can have a little more simplification so 1 by 4 is uh, also something that is common ok so let us put 1 by 4 here and then minus um, minus 1 by 4 um, e raised to so let us put e raised to minus t also let us take it as common and then i have cos 
root 3 t then plus uh, plus what plus uh, root 3 sin root 3 t into so whole multiplied with the u of t okay so you can if you want you can leave it here like this um, so let, let's check every term the first term is 1 by 4 into u of t that is there the second term is basically raised to minus a t cos uh, root 3 t and there is a minus 1 by 4 in u of t in the last term okay there is a minus sign i think so there, this will be minus okay so this will minus into minus will be become plus so root 3 by 4 sine uh, e raised to minus a t sine root 3 t u of t so this is the inverse laplace transform so this way you can uh, evaluate the inverse laplace transform it's uh, very easy uh, only thing is that you need to know the laplace transform of standard terms okay so here also i have assumed so I, uh, that it is right handed signal so so let me mention that explicitly in the question assuming the signal as right handed that is the most practical uh, okay, assuming the signal as right handed or in bracket you can say causal signal all right so now mm, let's see one property um, of uh, let's see one property of the laplace transform and what we want to find out is basically if uh, x of t and uh, x of s are Laplace transform pairs. Okay, if x of t and x of s are Laplace transform pairs, then uh, find the Laplace transform of uh, d by dt of x of t. That is the derivative of that function. What will be the Laplace transform? So how to find out this so first of all let us write what is x of s so x of s is basically um, is uh, if you apply apply the formula it is t going from minus infinity to plus infinity x of t into e raised to minus st uh, e raised to minus st um, dt so this is our definition for x of s now the question is like I, I, we want to find out what is the Laplace transform of x of t. So how can we uh, find out? Okay, so there are um, um, multiple ways uh, you can proceed. Um, one of the way is uh, is to directly apply the formula. Okay directly apply the formula for with the, the function replaced with the derivative okay so laplace transform of d by dt of x of t is basically equal to integral t going from minus infinity to plus infinity so d by dt of x of t so i substituted the function new function which is what uh, whose laplace transform we want to find out into e raised to minus st dt now uh, so we need to do some manipulations uh, so that uh, it would be expressed in terms of x of s so that that's basically the idea so what do you think that we should do in order to bring uh, x of s into the scene okay so ideally if you want to uh, remove a so you, you see that in the integrand has a product of two functions one of them is a derivative and the other is basically exponential and uh, our aim is basically to replace or remove this uh, derivative from the x of t and uh, bring it into a, a more standard form okay where you have x of t instead so in order to do that you can apply integration by parts so applying 
integration by parts okay so which function we have to take if at all we have to remove the derivative so we have to take um, this term as the second function okay uh, so uh, that means so lhs uh, is equal to that is laplace transform of this is equal to um, so we will take uh, first function as e raised to minus st and then integral of the second which is x of t okay and then uh, i apply uh, the limits so that is t equal to minus infinity t is equal to plus infinity minus then derivative of the uh, first function so i am taking uh, okay let me just write it so this is what i am taking it as the first function in the product and this is second function okay so t is equal to okay and then minus uh, so when i say um, derivative of the first function what do i mean so i'll have t going from minus infinity to plus infinity i will have minus s into e raised to minus st into x of t okay so i i can see that uh, whatever i wanted that i wanted to bring it into uh, the terms of x of s so that is uh, coming here and then dt now one issue is that what about the first term so what is the value of this term so what we can say about this term uh, is that um, x of t uh, into e raised to minus st uh, at t equal to infinity uh, should uh, uh, converge okay only then uh, mm, and at t equal to infinity as well as t is equal to minus infinity in both uh, uh, if it is uh, x of t is a one sided signal definitely t equal to minus infinity it is zero so there is no issue but at t equal to infinity uh, the x of t should be such that uh, that uh, it would be uh, so only then uh, you will have uh, this laplace transform of derivative exist okay so assuming assuming convergence convergence of uh, e raised to minus st into x of t at t equal to minus infinity so at t equal to minus infinity what i am saying is that the way to achieve uh, convergence is by having x of uh, minus infinity equal to 0 which is uh, uh, for any you know right handed signals uh, that is a good assumption because it will signal will start non zero only from some point of time so at minus infinity it will be zero uh, and but not only that we should have e raised to minus st into x of t uh, should be zero at uh, t equal to plus infinity so how do we ensure that that will be ensured by e raised to minus st so we have to take some value of s such that uh, this uh, will be satisfied now uh, earlier we have seen uh, similar conditions and at that time i told you like uh, if uh, it is greater than minus a the real part of s is greater than minus a then it would satisfy or plus a it would be satisfied now what will be the case here we do not know because um, x of t is not given so it will depend upon x of t okay so so at t equal to infinity uh, convergence is assured uh, by taking appropriate uh, value of uh, real part of s okay so this way you can uh, ensure it so so at uh, negative infinity this is what ensures um, uh, the convergence convergence means what i mean is this going to zero so this going to zero at these two points because i want this first term to uh, go to zero so that is ensured by uh, t at t equal to infinity it is ensured by uh, taking i mean 
assuming that uh, the function is right handed side then uh, of course it will be satisfied secondly at e equal to plus infinity by uh, 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 taking appropriate value of real part of s so you can always take from the s plane a uh, value such that uh, this uh, will be ensured at uh, plus infinity okay so if we uh, agree with uh, those then uh, we can write laplace transform of d by dt of x of t is equal to so minus into minus cos s i can take outside integral t equal to minus infinity to plus infinity and then uh, uh, x of t into e raised to minus s t dt which is s into x of s okay so this is uh, how uh, it will look like so taking a derivative means um, multiplying with s into x of s so x of t has a laplace transform x of s then the laplace transform of the derivative of x of t is basically s multiplying uh, or in other words we can say that taking a derivative in the uh, time of derivative of the signal is basically uh, uh, the effect of that is basically multiplying with s in the uh, laplace uh, transform function of x of t okay so that is uh, one thing now um, this property uh, has a, a, a variation to it uh, so that is uh, so let me first of all define what is called as uh, so far what we discussed the laplace transform is called so far we were sticking with the uh, bilateral bilateral laplace transform so that is what so far we have seen so far uh, bilateral La laplace transform uh, was uh, defined and uh, used and let me rewrite uh, the definition of bilateral laplace transform which is uh, that is laplace transform of a function x of t is given as integral t going from minus infinity to plus infinity x of t into e raised to minus st so you take the function multiply it with the kernel and then integrate from minus infinity to plus so this is bilateral laplace transform a variation to this uh, called unilateral this uh, I don't know whether you studied in max so, so, so the, this is bilateral and now next one is unilateral Laplace transform now unilateral Laplace transform is more useful for signal sun system a variation to this called unilateral Laplace transform also <coughs> exists and is very useful in the study of in the study of uh, LTI system so that is what I am going into next ok so um, uni lateral So what is unilateral Laplace transform? Uh, Laplace transform now with a suffix u of x of t is defined as 0 minus. So t is now varying from 0 minus to plus infinity x of t into e raised to minus st dt. So only difference is the limit. Okay, The lower limit is starting from 0 minus. Uh, 0 minus stands for a little before infinitesimally small time before 0 so that it will include what happens at t equal to 0 it will fully include what happens at t equal to infinity. otherwise it is 0 to infinity ok but uh, this is actually with the view of uh, x of t can even be a impulse function ok which has only value 
at t equal to 0. So, in order to include fully uh, an impulse function appearing at t equal to 0, we have taken uh, the limit from 0 minus. So, bilateral means two sided, unilateral means one sided. So, lateral means sided. Okay. <coughs> So, you must have heard in politics bilateral talk. So, you will have uh, two nations uh, you know, to talk with at the same time. They come into some kind of uh, you know um, agreement. So, <coughs> here uh, it means uh, x of t we are going to integrate only after multiplying with the kernel we will integrate only uh, to the right side. Okay. Now, this will not make any difference if the signal x of t is a one sided signal. Okay. So, that is an observation. So, take a note if uh, x of t is causal then both bilateral and most of the example we have seen is basically like that only both bilateral so laplace transform and uni, uh, unilateral gives the uh, same result if the function is uh, causal okay so it, it is conditional if the function is causal then both the bilateral laplace transform and unilateral laplace transform gives the same result but if they differ like x of t takes values or negative values of time then uh, the the result will differ okay now, uh, uh, very importantly, I want to uh, go back to the property that I have sh uh, just uh, shown, um, that is, um, <coughs> so uh, find question, find uh, L T U of uh, D by D T of X of T, L T U of <coughs> D by D T of X of T. Uh, if x of t and uh, x of s are Laplace transform pairs. So, it is the same property only difference is that now um, <coughs> we are taking this property with respect to uh, unilateral Laplace transform. Okay. So, let us go back to the derivation. So, Laplace transform unilateral of d by dt of x of t is equal to. So, the formula is 0 minus to infinity uh, d by dt of x of t into e raised to minus st dt ok so <coughs> so now as before uh, we are going to apply integration by parts ok so now so this is equal to um, so again we are taking first function as e raised to minus st e raised to minus st into integral of the second that is x of t but now the limit is from uh, 0 minus to infinity 0 minus to infinity so earlier it was um, minus infinity to plus infinity now it is from 0 minus to infinity so this uh, minus then integral of 0 minus to uh, plus infinity uh, we have uh, minus s into e raised to minus st into x of t so this is what we get now by the same argument which we did earlier uh, we can get rid of uh, plus infinity saying that it will converge but what about um, t equal to 0 minus ok so t is equal to 0 minus we cannot throw it away because uh, x of t is not 0 at 0 minus ok uh, but e raised to st is equal to 1 because when you put t equal to 0 then this will be equal to 1. So, therefore, this is equal to so at the plus infinity because of convergence I am saying that it is 0 but uh, minus 
it will be x of 0 minus and then plus s into uh, integral e raised to minus st 0 minus 2 plus infinity x of t or let me write it in the reverse order uh, so t going from 0 minus to infinity x of t into e raised to minus st so which means uh, that this is equal to uh, s into s into x of s minus x of 0 minus so this is the variation of the same property whenever we are uh, handling with the uh, unilateral laplace transform and this is very useful property you will see we can use this to uh, solve problems so this is the laplace transform of derivative of x of t okay so you have to study this by heart this you will use this uh, property uh, very often in solving problems and not only here even in network theory uh, you will use this uh, to solve problems okay so let's solve one problem from network theory which uses this property so the problem that i am going into maybe you have studied i don't know uh, uh, so you have a circuit with uh, some dc source let's say it is uh, 5 volt and uh, then <coughs> so there is a switch uh, like this which will be getting close at uh, t equal to 0 and then you have a resistance and um, uh, say you have a capacitor ok so there is an R and there is a C Now the question is find the current through this circuit. So this is 5 volt. Find the current through the circuit. So current let me wrote it, write it as I of t. Okay. This is the reason because we need I uh, in electrical engineering. That is why we do not use I for uh, square root of minus 1. We use J instead. Okay. So, uh, the question is find the current so resistance value let us uh, say that this is 2 ohm and uh, this is a half farad ok and uh, <coughs> let us also assume that um, the voltage on the capacitor is before the switch is closed just before the switch is closed that is t is equal to 0 switch is getting closed just before means 0 minus it is equal to say 2 volt so this is already there is a voltage on the capacitor some charge is stored in the capacitor so at t equal to 0 switch is getting closed and this 5 volt is getting connected now the question is like uh, what is the current flowing we need an expression of current is 0 for t less than 0 but for t greater than 0 what is the current so question is uh, find i of t for t greater than 0 or greater than or equal to 0. So, how do we solve? So, usually to solve such problems we write uh, the KVL equation ok. So, you can write uh, you can say uh, so for t greater than 0 if you write the KVL equation for t greater than or equal to 0 KVL how do you write so this is 5 volt is coming here and then i of t into uh, r then plus 1 by c integral uh, integral uh, i of t dt now this integral is actually from minus infinity to uh, t 
So that is how the voltage on the capacitor is uh, defined. It is 1 by C integral of I dt from minus infinity to plus infinity. Okay. So, uh, so our aim is to find this current. Now, okay, so I have not taught uh, what, what will be the Laplace transform of the integral of the function. So, to solve this problem, we ne also need uh, the Laplace transform of the integral of the function, which I have not taught. Mm. Okay, so maybe this problem I will take it later. Uh, so, let us uh, consider another problem which we can solve with what we have learned. Okay, so, let us take here. Uh, so, problem 2. So this is uh, RL circuit. So in this circuit, mm, let's see what we can do. There is a resistance and then there is a inductor. So R L and then like to have some current at t equal to 0 flowing through the inductor so um, what I can do is um, solve like this again 5 volt I am giving R is equal to 2 L is equal to half let us say and closing the switch at t equal to 0 now current cannot flow at t less than 0 so, okay. so there is 0 current flowing Let's ok so if this is the problem then uh, 5 volt is equal to KVL, so this is KVL at uh, t t greater than or equal to zero. So five volt switch is closed, so the voltage appears. So R into uh, I of t plus L uh, d I of t I d t. So we have the values. So let's substitute. So this is two two into I of t plus uh, L, uh, L is half, so half into di by dt uh, yeah, of i of t. So, our aim is to find, the question is uh, find i of t for t greater than or equal to 0. So, we have the KVL uh, written here. So, 5 is equal to 2 i of t plus half uh, uh, d by dt of i of t. So, the, the way of so solution is taking Laplace transform unilateral on both sides. So, what will happen? So, this is uh, constant okay, and we are taking the unilateral Laplace transform of uh, basically um, Laplace transform of 1. So, that is equal to uh, 2 into Laplace transform unilateral okay, of I of t plus half into Laplace transform unilateral of d by dt of I of t. Okay. So, this is uh, how we proceed. Now, Laplace transform of 1 is what? So, 5 into u of t sorry uh, 1 by s 5 into 1 by s. Okay. So, this is unilateral Laplace transform. So, it is like basically uh, finding the bilateral Laplace transform of 
uh, u of t unilateral laplace transform of one is basically bilateral laplace transform of u of t because we are integrating only from 0 minus to infinity so this is equal to 2 into and let's call this as uh, i of s capital i of s and then half into and now what will be this this will be uh, s into i of s minus i of 0 minus so that is the property that we just uh, derived so we are making use of that property so that's the purpose of this problem just to make use of the properties that we have to do so that is uh, phi by s is equal to 2 plus s by 2 into uh, i of s so i combined the terms in i of s there is a term 2 i of s there is a half i of s okay uh, with the s multiplied and then minus half i of 0 minus so then what we need to do is basically um, write i of s is equal to what is i of s equal to so i of s is equal to first of all pi by s minus half uh, i take it to the other side so it will become plus i of 0 minus then 2 plus s by 2 so now what is left is basically some algebraic simplification so that will be i of s uh, plus half i of 0 minus so this i can write it as uh, 4 plus s uh, divided by 2 or i can write it as 5 by s plus half into i of 0 minus into uh, 2 by 4 plus s or s plus 4 okay, so let me write it as s plus 4 ok so which is equal to 5 into s into s plus 4 so there is a 2 also so that will become 10 numerator will be 10 and then I have another term where this 2 2 cancels and I have 0 minus divided by s plus 4 so this is what finally I will get the i of s so my intention was to find out i of t which is basically Laplace transform unilateral inverse of i of s so which is equal to uh, Laplace transform unilateral inverse of uh, two term one is 10 by s s into s plus 4 minus um, i of 0 minus into Laplace transform unilateral of 1 by s plus 4 now in this problem our current is 0 at t equal to 0 so given for this particular problem okay it, it varies from problem to problem given i of 0 minus is equal to 0 therefore the second term entirely goes to 0 but mm, I want to say here one thing that is uh, this term is entirely due to the input applied so I want to categorize now into two so there are two terms in I of s one is due to the input applied and the other is uh, due to the initial condition so this is initial condition i of 0 minus is the initial condition if if we have non zero initial condition this term will also be present ultimately whereas phi by s is basically the input applied okay and the response that is the current is the response uh, to the input applied is called uh, zero uh, state response and uh, the response due to the initial condition is called zero input response okay 
So all that is left is to find the Laplace transform in to solve this particular problem i of 0 minus is 0 the second term 0 input response is not there only 0 state response is there that is the effect of the input alone and um, so what you need to do is basically arrange the terms uh, in, in uh, uh, using partial fraction you can write uh, uh, s into s plus 4 as a by s plus b by s plus 4 find a and b and uh, then write them in standard form and then find the inverse so i will give this as a homework because we have already done similar problem uh, to find i of t okay so the, but uh, i hope you you are uh, now clear with the approach probably you might have studied this in network theory also this is part of network theory but I am just showing uh, from a signal and system perspective the same problem you will study in network theory. So a problem like this where you are switching, uh, I mean, you are closing the switch at time t equal to 0. So the 5 volt is applied uh, to a series combination of R and L then you know what will be the current flowing through the circuit. So you write the KVL and then take the Laplace transform then uh, rearrange it and find the inverse that is the only procedure. So this procedure is very powerful and we use unilateral Laplace transform for this so that this initial condition can also be taken care of. If you use um, uh, bilateral Laplace transform this formula will be just s into i of s and you have no information about the initial condition. So in order to bring in the initial condition information uh, that is just before the closing of the switch what is the situation was there any current flowing through the inductor you can't have any current here in this problem because it's a serious circuit when you are opening the circuit current cannot flow but uh, a different circuit can have initial conditions so for example this one here which i did not solve today uh, we will solve it later uh, we have a possibility of having voltage before the closing of the switch so you can have an initial condition where vc of 0 minus is 2 volt or some other non zero value so due to that also you can have an effect on the current okay so the current will have two components one is entirely due to the input applied 5 volt that you have applied and secondly due to the non zero initial condition in the circuit okay maybe a voltage on the capacitor current through the inductor etc so we will see more uh, problems later and uh, uh, we will study about it and uh, and you will see that uh, this problem uh, if you look at I think we have uh, solved uh, um, in the network theory class uh, similar problem we found the current uh, in an uh, uh, when you apply a pulse so this is like applying a pulse uh, at 5 volt uh, at a time t equal to 0 then we, we saw how the current varies so so when you solve this uh, expression you should get uh, the uh, you know the actual expression for the current which we uh, simulated in the last uh, class okay so i will discuss it further uh, in the lab class um, the continuation of this uh, we will take up some problems um, in the lab class okay. so i will stop here if you have any